Inshallah, we will continue with Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. قتل أصحاب الأخدود الله والسماء ذات البروج واليوم الموعود وشاهد ومشهود قتل أصحاب الأخدود النار ذات الوقود إذ هم عليها قعود وهم على ما يفعلون بالمؤمنين شهود We touched upon that yesterday We'll just summarize that this verse this surah Allah is swearing by some great signs of that he created so buruj by the heavens with stages or constellations or cycles and we said that in the tafsir uh, many mufassirs said it refers to the stations of the sun and the moon as they move through the skies uh, and we said shahid is the day of friday allah is swearing by the day of friday as a holy day Eid for the ummah and mashhud is the day of arafah uh, which is Al Hajj Arafah means if you don't stand on Arafah on uh, when you go to Hajj, you, your Hajj is not acceptable. Hajj is Arafah. So these are two very holy days during one. Qutila Ashabul Uhdud that cursed are the people of the ditch. What ditch? Uh, the ditch that they built for the believers to bury them in. Uh, summarize the story but here Sayyid Ibn Kathir actually goes over it uh, what what is the story of those people uh, the believers that were thrown in in uh, a ditch that is lit on fire and what caused that may they be cursed the people of the ditch and the people that actually tormented the believers the curse is for them and Nari that is they they um, made this big fire and they kept kept making it bigger and bigger by throwing fuel into it. Idhum alayha qurud and they sat there watching the believers were thrown into the uh, fire. Wahum ala ma yafaluna bil mu'minin shud and they are sitting there watching the believers being killed in such horrific way and they verily the only reason that they have this enmity this they wanted to avenge uh, themselves by killing these people is that these people believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-aziz the mighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the praiseworthy Wallahu ala kulli shayin shaheed and verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is witness on everything. Everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nothing is concealed from him. And the story of the uh, Ashab al-Ukhdud is the story of the sorcerer, the monk, the boy, and the king who uh, claimed to be Lord. And uh, this is Imam Ahmad recorded in uh, from Suhaib that the Messenger of Allah said, Sayyidina Muhammad told the story that amongst you kana fikum qabla malikun wa kana lahu shahid. That before you, before your time, there was a king and he had a sorcerer. Falamma, uh, when the sorcerer became old in age, the king said to the, uh, the he said to the king, I'm getting older. And I'm feeling that my time is short. So give me somebody, a ghulam of yours, give me a servant of yours so I can teach him so that my knowledge is not lost. And the king gave him a, a young man and he was teaching him magic. And this young man 
one day passed, he saw this monk, he passed by him, he heard what he was speaking, and he liked his uh, speech, he liked what he was talking about. And he used to come, when he used to go to the uh, sorcerer, the sorcerer was very mean to him, he would beat him. And um, uh, and he would tell him, what, how come you are late? Because he would sit and listen to the monk on the way to the sorcerer and he would be late so the sorcerer would hit him and he would ask him what why are you late and when he goes back to his family and they would also hit him because he would stop at the monk going and coming at the monk's place going and coming listening to him so when he goes to his family his family would beat him up and say why are you late so he complained to the monk and the monk said to him when the sorcerer wants to beat you up say that what made me late is my family and when your family wants to beat you up say to them don't beat me up what made me late is the sorcerer so he, that that's how he got uh, away from the abuse so one day this young man he was walking and he saw this beast, this animal, and people was blocking the door for the the road for people. People were afraid of it, so uh, they couldn't. The road was blocked. Um, and he said, "Today I will I will know uh, if uh, um, the is more dear to me." Uh, or uh, the or the sorcerer so he took a stone and he said oh Allah if the uh, monk is more beloved to you uh, and you are more pleased with him than the sorcerer then if when I throw this at the beast uh, die until so that the people can pass so he did he took that stone and he he threw it at the beast and the beast and people were able to continue on their way so he told the uh, monk what happened and the monk says oh my son you exceed me and in your in your spiritual station and verily you will be tested because if you have such a gift it doesn't come for free so you will be tested فَإِنِ بْتُلِيْتَ فَلَا تَدُلَّ عَلَيْ And if you are um, tried, يعني, if, if don't, if people, if people uh, ask you about me, don't tell them about me. And this child, his gift continued to grow, so he started to heal people. He started to do leper, lepers and uh, le leprosy. Um, and even uh, worst uh, diseases he would heal. And uh, there was a minister or uh, somebody who, uh, acquaintance of the king, he became blind. So he heard of this kid, he went to him, took him gifts, and he said, please heal me, and you have all these gifts for you. He says, I don't heal anybody. The one who heals is Allah Azza wa Jal. If you believe in him, I will pray for you and he will heal you. So the person accepted uh, Islam and uh, the child, the young man, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad, healed him. When that acquaintance of the king came back and his eyesight was back to him, the king asked him, how did you do it? And he said, that, told him about this child. من فقال له الملك يا فلان من رد عليك بصرك هو بصرك he said who brought back your eyesight he said my lord my creator he said the king said me he said no my lord and your lord Allah he said you have another lord than me he says yes yeah, my lord and your lord Allah so he the king started tormenting him until he gave the uh, young man 
arrested the young, also tormented him until he gave the monk. And similarly, uh, he, the king asked him to recant his religion and accept the king as a lord fused so they sewed him in two and and this reminds us of um, when uh, the uh, companions of prophet sallallahu in in uh, mecca when uh, when they were being tormented by the unbelievers and they went to prophet sallallahu and said mata nasrullah is mentioned in the quran when is allah's victory going to come the prophet sallallahu what have you experienced of difficulty? Before you, there were people that would be sowed in two, while still they would be sowed in two for their faith. And so this this monk that that was his punishment. He then the king said leave your religion and he refused so he sent him to a mountain and he told the people that took him there they said ask him to leave his religion if he doesn't throw him from the top of the mountain and kill him and the kid made dua allahumma kfinihim bima shi'ta oh allah protect me from them with whatever you wish and the mountain started to shake and they fell off the mountain and died the kid came sent him by sea and he told the people who took him uh, ask him to leave his religion if he doesn't throw him in again the kid made the same dua and the everybody drowned except the, the kid he came back finally The kid said to him, look, he came back to the king, the young man, and he said, look, if you want to kill me, I can show you how. You're not going to be able to kill me unless, I, unless you do what I say. He said, okay. What do you want me to do? He said, you collect the people. I want you to collect all the, the people from the city to come and witness. In one place. Then I want you to uh, crucify me on onto a uh, tree, uh, onto a tree, and then I want you to take an arrow from my arrows. Then I want you to say Bismillahi Rabbil Ghulam, that by in the name of Allah, the Lord of this young man, and then shoot the arrow. Be able to kill me. And that's what the king did, and he killed the young man. When the people witnessed this, because this is the king who used to say, I am Lord, he is saying now in the name of the Lord of the child. When when the when the city people uh, witnessed this, they they all believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the advisors of the king, you see, said, you see what you did now. They all don't believe you are Lord. And all the city people, all the people who were present there believed. That's when this king, he ordered his army to make a ditch. Huh? And they... Uh, burned a strong fire in it and the king said whoever leaves his religion let them let him go whoever doesn't leave his religion throw him in there Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad Uh, 
And that's how they threw these people in the ditch. And Allah is mentioning this story. And, and he ends it with, there was one, فَجَاءَتِ امْرَأَ بِبْنٍ لَهَا One um, woman was carrying her nursing child. And when she, she almost changed her mind last minute and she wanted to say that I'm no longer believing in this religion. And the child who was nursing spoke and said, اصبري يا أمامة فإنك على الحق Mother, be patient. You are upon the truth. And they threw so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Cursed are the people of Ukhdud. Cursed are the people who killed these believers simply for the simple fact that they believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ فَتَنُوا الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ ثُمَّ لَمْ يَتُوبُوا فَلَهُمْ عَذَابُ جَهَنَّمْ وَلَهُمْ عَذَابُ الْحَرِيقِ Those who put the believing men and women into trial just because of their faith. يعني they say either we'll kill you or you leave. Those people, this was said by some Mujahid Qatada that uh, this, this is in reference to the people of Ukhdud. Then they don't repent. They don't cease from what they are doing and, re and regret and repent. فَلَهُمْ عَذَابُ جَهَنَّمَ وَلَهُمْ عَذَابُ الْحَرِيقِ Verily what awaits him is the torment of hell and the torment, the punishment of burning. They will be burned. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ لَهُمْ جَنَّاتٌ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارِ ذَلِكَ الْفَوْجُ الْكَبِيرِ On the opposite end, those who believe and engage in good deeds, they, for them, await heavens under, underneath which uh, rivers flow and that is the grand success that is the grand uh, the great competition the grand success Al-Fawzul Kabir Inna Batsha Rabbika Lashadid Verily Allah's punishment Allah's vengeance uh, is 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 Shadid is too strong min uh, shidda yani is is powerful innahu huwa yubdi wa yu'id his punishment of your lord is so severe and painful innahu huwa yubdi wa yu'id he is the one who began creation and he is the one who can repeat it means from his perfect strength and power is that he begins creation and he can repeat it, Resurrection Day, just as he began. وَهُوَ الْغَفُورُ الْوَدُودُ And he is the forgiving one, the uh, loving Lord, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He forgives the sin of he, whoever repents to him and humbles himself. And... No matter what the sin may be, Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas and others have said about the name Al-Wadud, it means the loving one. Dhul Arshi al-Majid, meaning the owner of the mighty throne. Fa'alun lima yurid. He does exactly as he wills and wishes. Whatever he wants is done. No one to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's will or wish. He, uh, no one can, can question Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is something all of us, when we read the seerah and we read how the companions, even those who were given the glad tidings of al Ashra al Mubashareen bil Jannah, they were given the certification. Prophet Sallallahu told them in dunya, like Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Sayyidina Umar, Sayyidina Uthman, Sayyidina Ali, that they were told that they will be in heaven. Even them, when, when we read their stories and their seer, we see that they were still in awe and they were still 
between hope and fear. And he said, uh, Abu Bakr Siddiq used to say, if I have one foot in, in heaven and one foot, I'm not feeling safe. And Sayyidina Umar used to say, if my good deeds and bad deeds cancel each other and I have no deeds, I would be happy. Uh, because of this, Allah does what He wants, what He wills. Allahumma No one can object. Here, also, Sayyidina Abu Bakr, that it was said to him during his illness, his death, Beth, has a doctor seen you? He replied, yes. Uh, they said, and what did he, the doctor say to you? He replied, he said, I am the, do, the doer of whatever I intend. He quoted them the verse. He said, they, the doctors, he said, said to, to him, Allah does as he likes. Means if he is going to take your soul, he is going to take your soul. Said, Did you hear the news of Fir'aun and his armies and his followers and the people of Thamud? Did you hear? These two uh, people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent them on punishment on them. And there was no one to protect them, ward off from their punishment. And this is the affirmation of the statement in Nabatsha Rabbika la Shadid that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes his vengeance. It is too heavy, it is too powerful. And it is also to affirm the verse, فَعَالٌ لِمَا يريد. Allah does as He likes. بَلِ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا فِي تكذيب. Nay, No, the disbelievers, verily, the disbelievers are, uh, deny the truth. Wallahu min wara'ihim muhit and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encompasses them. Uh, they have no place to run. He is they are completely contained under Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's observation and power. Bal huwa Quranun Majid, verily it is a magnificent and noble and glorious Quran. Fi lawhim mahfuz. Guarded from, protected and guarded and gathered. And this is uh, from Tafsir Surah Al-Wuruj. That this, this Quran is protected from, until Judgment Day, Holy Quran cannot be altered or changed. Uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala has gathered it as, as, as it is now, since it was revealed, and it will be the same when we meet our Lord, insha'Allah. Uh, and this is the end of Surah Al-Buruj. And we go into Surah Al-Tariq. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa-Shama'i wa-Tariq. وما أدراك ما الطارق النجم الثاقب إن كل ش إن كل نفس لما عليها حافظ. In this surah, also Prophet has mentioned it to Sayyidina Mu'adh. When Sayyidina Mu'adh was uh, reading long surahs in Isha prayer, and the people were complaining, Prophet saw us and said, "These people, is it enough for you to read Surah As-Sama wa tariq This surah that we mentioned. Or washamsi wa duhaha, and like that. Yeah, and you keep it five minutes, uh, ten minutes. Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. Wa samayi wa tariq wa ma adraqiq. An najm al thaqib in kullu nafsi lamma alayha hafiz. 
فلينظر الإنسان مما خلق خلق مما إن دافق يخرج من بين الصلب والترائب إنه على رجعه لقادر يوم تبل السرائر فما له من قوة ولا ناصر والسماء والطارق That Allah is swearing here by the heavens and a tariq. Tariq is from tariqa, that knocks. وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا الطَّارِقَ النَّجْمُ الثَّاقِبُ What do you know about a tariq? And Allah explains that it is the piercing star. النَّجْمُ الثَّاقِبُ Recently someone has been sharing, I know, someone shared with me uh, that NASA or somebody, they recorded the sound of a star that it sounds like it is knocking. Allahu A'lam, yani, we, we believe with certainty that there, there is, um, that this uh, star that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is swearing with is, is in existence, but I'm not sure that that one is, is the one, Allahu A'lam. Ibn Abbas said, Thaqib is not uh, only the piercing, Allahumma salli ala sallam, he said that a thaqib is the illuminating. Ikrimah said, it illuminates and it burns the shayateen. In kullu nafsin lamma alayha hafidh, verily every human being has a assigned protector over him. He's a guardian over it from Allah subhanahu that protects it from the calamities that is not supposed to be falling upon it. This is Allah says, لَهُ مُعَقِّبَاتٌ In another verse that explains this verse, لَهُ مُعَقِّبَاتٌ مِنْ بَيْنِ يَدَيْهِ وَمِنْ خَلْفِهِ يَحْفَظُونَهُ مِنْ أَمْرِ اللَّهِ That every human being has angels in succession. Before him, they guard him by the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَلْيَنْظُرِ الْإِنسَانُ مِمَّا خُلِقُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to, ref to reflect. Uh, we, he wants us to meditate upon our own creation. Upon, upon creation in general because everything points you. يَدُلُّ عَلَىٰ أَنَّ اللَّهَ وَاحِدُ Everything in this creation, if you only reflect upon uh, as a sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it will lead you to believe in Allah. فَلْيَنْظُرِ الْإِنسَانُ مِمَّا خُلِقْ Let the human being uh, look into. Let man see from what he has been created. And it takes, if a person just looks at, at our own uh, creation, we world didn't bring ourselves into this world. And we, when we leave this world, no one is asking us our permission. Uh, so just if, if you take a look, and if you look at the stages of the growth of a human being, and the, and the precise, how precise it is, and how many things are needed to uh, be happening at the same time, and in a precise way for us to stay in existence, for us to breathe, for example. You know, and the process of breathing that happens involuntarily. All this stuff, just a reflection upon it makes you realize you have nothing to do with your own creation. That there must be a greater designer, a magnificent creator that has created you. فَلْيَنْظُرِ الْإِنسَانُ مِمَّا خُلِقْ خُلِقَ مِمَّا إِنْ دَافِقَ And Allah is saying, you have been created from a gushing water. And this refers to the word of a man. Um, that the children are produced from. يَخْرُجُ مِنْ بَيْنِ الصُّلْبِ وَالتَّرَائِبِ This water comes from between the backbone and the ribs. That somehow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made this mechanism to be located between the backbone and the ribs, meaning the back, the loins, 
It's another word of, for using it. The loins of men and the ribs of the women, which is referring to, the, to, her, to her chest. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Verily, the one who can do this is able to bring him back into life, to resurrect him after he dies. If we created him, yani it doesn't take any rational human being. The one who created a human being the first time, stop him from resurrecting him again. It makes no sense. إِنَّهُ عَلَىٰ رَجْعِهِ لَقَادِرُ Verily, he is able to bring him back. يَوْمَ تُبْلَى سَرَائِرُ On the day, the secrets of people will be examined. Meaning, on the day of judgment, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will expose and make manifest what is hidden. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will expose what is hidden, especially for, there's a hadith that indicates uh, the meaning of this. Say, every traitor and betrayer will have a flag raised on Judgment Day. They will raise a flag behind his back. And it will be said, this is the betrayal of so and so, son of so and so, huh? exposed in, in front of everyone what he did. And on that day, he will have no power, no ability, and no one will come to his aid, no one will come to help him. Wala Nasir means no, no, no one will aid him. When he is faced with uh, with the torment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no one will be able to save him. And by the sky which gives rain again and again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, year after year, month after month, he's sending the rain, he's sending the, sky, the, the clouds. And the earth which splits or separates Verily, this is not an amusement this is a serious matter what we are saying Verily they plot and scheme and I plot as well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. So, let them wait. Give them time to the believers. Deal gently with them for a while, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, give them time. Give them time until uh, they either believe or they will meet what Allah has promised. Let them wait until they see what befalls them of torment. ومن الله التوفيق بحرمة الحبيب بحرمة الفاتحة. Tomorrow uh, is the evening. Tomorrow evening is the evening of the Battle of Badr. So we might, uh, inshallah, probably do something uh, to do with that instead of the tafsir. ومن الله التوفيق بحرمة الحبيب بحرمة الفاتحة. صلى الله عليه وسلم. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته All those who said السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام بارك الله فيكم Thank you for joining us